Tucker Carlson is right. What the white supremacy problem in America is indeed a hoax perpetrated by the left, because what they're doing is defining Republicans as white supremacists. And so you've noticed they've gone from terrorist is inspired by Donald Trump's rhetoric, which we don't have any evidence for yet, and we have evidence to suggest he did he wasn't, but anyway, they've gone from terrorist supported uh, inspired by Donald Trump's rhetoric. Therefore, anyone who supports Donald Trump is a racist because the white, the racist likes Donald Trump. This is how they've connected one terrorist to essentially Trump's entire base. And now they're just everyone. Everyone is a white supremacist now. It's just everywhere. It's an obsession. I mean, look at AOC's Twitter feed, right? Just search for the term white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. Just constant. Just, just, it's all over the place. Just, she's constantly talking about it. And so it's like when Tucker Carlson says, well, look, this is actually a myth that's just being perpetuated. He's completely correct. It's, com it's total fake news. But by the way that it's being reported, you would think that white supremacists have taken over the Republican Party, but they haven't. Like, they actively haven't. Like, it's ridiculous. The whole thing is a lie, said Carlson, who has routinely given out time to white nationalist conspiracy theories and talking points. It's actually not a real problem in America. I love that they spliced this in. Nice editorializing. This is a hoax, just like the Russia hoax. It's conspiracy theory used to divide the country and keep hold on power. It's exactly what's going on. It's really like the new form of McCarthyism. Everything is white supremacy. I, I showed it. In, there was the MSNBC host saying, well, all of these numbers are dog whistles to Nazis. And there was a whole list of them that I did in the live stream a, a few hours ago. And I, I'm just coming back to this because I'm just reading through the news and it's just total nonsense. Non stop, complete nonsense. And the way that it's happening is, is that the left are defining it this way, but. Carlson said, I've lived here 50 years. I've never met anybody, not one person who ascribes to white supremacy. I don't know a single thing who thinks that's a good idea. They're making this up. Well, honestly, they, they are. Like, this is the thing. Like, the actual number of white supremacists worldwide is a very, very small number. People are just not as racist as the left desire them to be. Which is why AOC is like, hey, look, if I, I, I love this, uh, a congresswoman... So someone who possibly shouldn't be telling the press what to print, you would think that was remarkable collusion or like some sort of fascist domination over the press. If it were going to be a right winger who's de declaring to just literally, she tags the Washington Post, Huffington Post, um, uh, Fox News, BuzzFeed, MSNBC, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Los Angeles Times. She tags major publications and says, you should do this. The, here's some advice, you know. If I were a journalist and, and or worked in news, this is what I'd do right now. Who gives a fuck what you would do? Who cares who you, what you would do? You are a fucking rabid propagandist who has a rhetorical style similar to Hitler at this point. Like, I don't care what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez would do with journalism. She is an irresponsible media outlet of her own on social media. She posts loads... She's been currently going after a bunch of school kids who had a cardboard cutout of her and, like, choking it and stuff. And Mitch McConnell was just like, I don't care, boys will be boys. And that was like a red rag to a bull. Boys will be boys. My God, how, how could he say that? That just proves that he thinks it's okay to rape people or something. And now she's going for the press and it's just like, she's mad. She's, she's <laughs> drunk with power is how I would describe it, right? But anyway, media, let her tell you how to do your job. And you're going to fall in line because you're fucking on side. Interview actual experts on white supremacy and give them space, more than two minutes or lines, to educate the public on white supremacy and what to look for often. Thing is, right, they've, the MSNBC literally did this, and the guy came out with a numerological conspiracy theory that the White House was raising $88 million just so they could heil Hitler to the Nazis. Or when it, they did something that involved 14 words. Oh, well, well they, they've got a phrase called the 14 words. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just... <laughs> anyway, give them, give them space to propagate their conspiracy theories that agree with you. Not frame white supremacy and racism as conflict or debate. 
Well, the thing is, Miss Cortez, not everyone agrees with what you define as white supremacy or racism, right? Like, people just don't agree that what you're saying is those things, what you're identifying is those things. And so, when you say, right, this is the case, and there's no debate on it, you sound like a fucking dictator. You sound like that you literally will not broach any kind of disagreement on the way you view the world, which is scary, frankly. And the fact that you can't even recognize that you might not even be right. You know, you, you, you're like, you're right, the other side are evil. That's what this is. It's not that they have a difference of opinion, or you could be wrong, it's that they're evil, right? The reason there's a tendency to both sides on every issue on TV is because the medium is incentivized for conflict. Also because people disagree with you, and it would be fair to hear the other side of the argument. Like, it's not just because the media is incentivized for conflict. And, and, and who plays into that more than you? Let's be honest. So people will put the least qualified people on TV to create, see, to create it, see climate deniers. Don't put, is blank racist? Have experts explain what to do about racism. <laughs> we've just assumed they're racist. We've defined them as racist. Now we just need the experts to tell you how to feel about this. Again, the, there is no questioning what she thinks on the side she's on and her experts. They're, they are... They are the understanders of white supremacy, you see. <laughs> let them tell you. Three, don't let neo-Nazis on TV. Ah, she's talking to you, CNN. To buff their image or couch racism in reasonable sounding terms slash appearance. Right. Perhaps the, the reason it sounds reasonable is because they're not racists and they're not proposing racism and you just define things after the fact as racist if they have different effects on different groups of people. That's what this is, isn't it, Alexandria? You lunatic. Sounds obvious, but it happened just a few weeks ago. I told you she was calling you out CNN. Supremacists are experts in manipulation, including manipulating smart people. Man, she knows a lot about how supremacists manipulate people, smart people included. She knows all about it. <laughs> I wonder if she's going to start suddenly talking in a weird accent or just, like, baby eyes the camera or whatever. You know, I mean, they're experts in manipulation, though. Not her. She's totally genuine. Also, have editors of colour. Diversity not only in the lowest ranks, but the highest. News is behind on huge stories and coverage is suffering because of lack of diversity. Wow, she sounds like Trump. Just the progressive version here. Fake news is suffering, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, no, no. It's a lack of diversity is why they're suffering. I've been invited to editor roundtables. Just utterly shocked that no people of colour were present. In 2019, that's a big problem. Must be white supremacy. It must be white supremacy. She is going to be a mad dictator when she finally takes over America. Mark my words.